got plus one armor now going at the forge, so he's going to try to get the upgrade game going. It's already plus one weapons, um, plus one ranged weapons for the Zerg. Oh, bad, bad storm dodge there. That is a lot of kills on that group of hydrolics. That's eight. Eight kills storm. That was pretty beautiful. But the thing is, Harlequin doesn't need to win the game right here. He's got his fourth base coming up. He's defended his third. He can expand along the top of the map as well. And if he can hold against this big zealot Templar attack, which I think he should pretty easily be able to do, then he's going to just be in a really strong economic position. There's an observer out now, so... Um, yeah, wow. Sniping a couple of Templars with Hydralisks. Zerg shouldn't be able to do that, but just the, the army composition of zealot Templar that Smace is going for is really allowing Harlequin to... Uh, pull off some things you normally wouldn't expect a Zerg player to be able to do against Protoss. And now just look at this army. There's going to be some lurkers coming. The Hydralisk upgrades are done. We've got ranged 2 and melee attack. Um, what is the melee attack level on that? There isn't a Zergling that I can click on to find out. Now the thing about Smace's earlier army composition Wow, that's a lot of units. How did he get those that quickly? Because he's going seven gateways off of two bases. That's how. So this is a sort of pure style mass gateways off of two bases and then try to take a third, which is now going up over here. Style of play. But the Zerg has just got enough units to push the Protoss back here. And it's not exactly clear how he's going to defend this expansion, even with the cannons that he's adding here. Um, with Protoss on the run. Protoss is going to have a lot of units. Seven gateways is probably going to more than equal the production capacity off of um, five hatcheries, but the Zerg has a bit of a better mix and is going to have these high ground advantages, so Protoss is going to be restricted in their movements for the next little bit. Here come the Hydralists again. There's going to be some storms. Where are the storms? Now that Templar has finally got the energy, those Templar are now storm ready, but the Zerg, clever, the Zerg rather smartly scattering the units there. Meanwhile, the Zerg's still going on lair attack. Doesn't really seem to be a whole lot going on. Um, still using every egg, except at this expansion here. So the Zerg's macroing pretty well. Protoss probably having a bit of an easier time keeping units pumping out of these gateways. And looks like armor 2 going up for Protoss. That's an interesting that's an interesting choice. Typically you're going to be seeing the Protoss going for weapons upgrades rather than armor here because Zerg is going to be um, normally upgrading Carapace at a uh, pretty quick rate. Is there a third evolution chamber somewhere upgrading Carapace? Yes. So the Zerg upgrades right now, plus one Carapace, plus one ranged attack, plus two on both of those coming, plus one melee is coming as well. And now the Protoss player has shifted his tech um, and his army composition to something a lot more reasonable. He's now going Zealot Dragoon Templar. And this is going to be um, pretty decent against this Hydra Lurker Ling Force. The Dragoon's really a useful add, and these Storms doing a good bit of damage all over the place. As Zerg is pushing now up toward the Zerg, um, Protoss is pushing up toward the Zerg fourth, but look at the reinforcements coming across the map here. It's a bunch of lurkers, some hydralisks. Overlord speed is researched, and the thing about the early Templar composition is that yes, Storm is very powerful, but um, it serves as a bit of, as a force multiplier for the army. And what I mean by that is the storms make the additional units that you have more effective. By weakening, um, by weakening the enemy units and killing off some of them. But when you have only six zealots as the rest of your army, you don't have very much force to be multiplied, and these Protoss units are now chased down and goo. And drop has been upgraded. And with Protoss kind of continually looking to push out on his um, seven, seven gateways and to inflict some damage on the Zerg, he is going to be leaving his uh, main base exposed to a drop back here. Um, he's got more than enough pylons, so losing a few isn't going to be so bad. 
So on 90 food out of 171, which is a lot more than I would have expected, Zerg on 102. And here comes the drop now. The Protoss army is out in the middle of the map, and he has spotted this but late, and he's going to be liable to lose a whole bunch of stuff here. Nothing left that mineral line, and he's just adding yet more gateways. Reinforcements and the army returning are going to be able to clear this out, but it's going to be very difficult for the Protoss to be able to harass the Zerg now that the threat of drops in his main is so prevalent. Because basically any time the Protoss tries to push out, there can be a drop, and that Nexus is forced to cancel. I think the Protoss getting a little bit greedy there, trying to take his, um, take, take his fourth. A lot of gas piling up for the Zerg, so we can expect to see some hive tech, and there that goes, coming up now, as the Zerg is going to be able to start fielding some higher tech units. And the Zerg is taking a fifth base here, while this uh, this expansion is still looking kind of thin. On the other hand, though, it is still a pretty big 2-2 Protoss army here, so the Zerg once again just needs to survive a little bit longer and the economy is going to be in a pretty advantageous position for him. So this overlord loading up and let's see where is this Protoss force going? It could quite easily just push into the natural. There's no uh, no sunken colonies or anything like that over here but if he does that he is going to get hit with this huge flank and nice bit of uh, nice positioning there by Harlequin, baiting uh, baiting the Protoss into this unfavorable attack. But these storms are eating up a ton of the Zerg army. Lots more casualties in that flank than I would have expected. That is storms doing some force multiplication there. That is some strong sauce. But this is going to be cleaned up with pretty minimal damage. Only an evolution chamber knocked out. But yet, this push continues for our Protoss player. He is into the main base of the Zerg, taking out drones. Um, doing the right thing with this Zealot here, focusing on the gas drones. Zerg is making this transition to Hive Tech, where the, uh, the gas is going to be the key resource. That really has hurt the Zerg, but the Zerg is going to be able to regenerate this army pretty quickly. Once he gets his um, once he gets his mineral lines resaturated, he is a bit thin at his main, and it is going to be difficult for the Zerg to reestablish the economy in spite of the five bases. While Protoss is going to be able to keep put pumping out armies this quickly with let's see, is it still nine gateways? Ten, ten gateways. So the Protoss is going to look to just keep keep pounding the Zerg on the ground, and with these decent storms, he might be able to do that, though it's not entirely clear. Zerg is going to have the economic advantage, and so if Protoss doesn't start doing some substantial damage pretty quickly, Zerg's economy should be able to start producing just too much for the Protoss to handle. So that's the dynamic of the game we're in right now. Um, still the possibility for some drops, but over at this expansion, Four Dark Templar drop, that's just, that's some really uncommon stuff. And this expansion is looking like it's going to be shut down. I don't think any reinforcements there are going to be able to save that hatchery. No, so that's some, that's the kind of damage the Protoss needs to do, because he's got his fourth base coming online right now, and four base Protoss is in a better economic position than four base Zerg. So nice move with the, that harassment here. And food supply does say a lot about the Protoss situation. 108 for the Protoss, 67 for the Zerg. The Zerg doesn't want to be quite this far behind on food, and he's not able to dodge those storms. And so a big, very efficient Protoss death ball is on the march here. How are the upgrades looking here? Plus 3 attack, plus 2 armor for the Protoss units.
And this is not looking so good for our Zerg player at the moment, though he does have a lot of reinforcements coming. He's going to lose at least one of these hatcheries. He's probably only going to lose one of these hatcheries. This, this army should be enough to clean it up. But at the moment, the Protoss can afford to just keep piling the pressure on. And as long as the Protoss does this, the Protoss should be okay. Because he's got the bigger army. And there's the GG from Harlequin. Nice game, Matt. Um, Smace, our Protoss, in spite of some dubious early army composition, able to just grind the game out with a mass, um, with a mass gateway strategy. So, I'm going to move on to game two. Thanks very much for watching. See you next game.